through some basic, basic footwork tonight. Yeah. Don't move that one. And as usual, I will give you guys a print of what it is I'm going through that I've made up today so that you can then use it to practice. So just in case, have you guys got a couple of sticks ready? Do you want to come do that over here? <laughs> no. And if you've got a third one, brilliant. If you haven't, don't worry. Go ahead. So let's have a look. This is where I would want a reverse triangle. Yeah. Well, as you guys can see that. We can work from that. Excellent. That looks in about the right place. Kind of see it and go back a little bit. Only cliff there. On the line. On no cliff and turn here there. Tony's always there. He's good Tony's boy. always there. He's a good boy. Tony's a good boy. Tony's a good boy. Cool. There we go. That's better. Excellent. Oh, so I hope all's going well with you guys. Oh, hi, Dan. Even Reggie, so I hope all's going well with you guys. How's it going, Cliff? Are you bored out of your brains yet? Not being able to do all the stuff that you usually do, and Tony's just going to the pub, really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah no, nah, we wish. Don't go to the pub anymore. <laughs> Remember what they're like. Cool. So we'll just wait a couple more secs for Gary to join in, because I saw Gary earlier, and I know he's been practising like crazy certain bits. I want to make sure he's doing okay. All right, so um, whilst we're waiting for him to join in, I'll go through, I was talking to Hanshi the other day about doing footwork with you guys um, and making that the next lesson um, and why it's important, why we, we think it's an important thing. It's because we tend to do it least. We tend to do all the fancy stuff with our arms and the nice stuff with our knives and the cool stuff with our sticks, but it all needs a base. Um, and footwork has to be a natural motion. It has to be what we naturally do. We don't do Kung Fu or anything where we're going to be doing obscure stances with our arms and legs. We need to be able to, like that. we need to be able to walk and train at the same time. We need to work from cold. So we don't do huge, big steps. We do natural motion. So footwork has to be natural motion. Um, and by learning economy of movement makes our lives an awful lot easier. Um, and when we commit this to our memories, um, it allows the unconscious competence to catch up and take over. Um, so by repracticing simple, simple, natural movements allows unconscious competence. Um, and then when we need it, it's going to allow us to be elegant and eloquent. And it's already going to be there. We don't have to think about it. That's the unconscious competence. And we can only do that by making it natural and by making it easy. It, the more, the more, the more means our brains just explode. Tony, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Simple is best for all of us, especially when we're walking around, just being able to naturally use it. To make okay. my so, movement more natural, as you all know, I can't dance. I have trouble moving. I fall over my left feet. But Hanshi decided to try and help me so that I could have an economy of movement always, so that I naturally walked around in this position so that I'm ready, I'm already balanced because my feet are hip width apart, I'm ready to move all the time. And the way he did this was he used to make me wear a belt and he made me wear a belt for about a year on every time we did any of the courses together. And he put the belt between my legs, like that. And so I had to train with this belt between my legs. And because it's that way round, I have to force the belt out to stop it falling over. Can you see that? So every time I was training, I was keeping my balance neutral where I'm able to work. I wasn't doing bizarre things where I'm suddenly going in like this or moving back or any of that because that's not how I naturally walk down the street. I don't walk down the street like that. Just in case someone comes to attack me. I naturally walk down the street a bit like I've stolen a horse. No, less of a waddle, I hope. More like that. So, it's worth having a play whilst you're at home and bored out of your brains. Feet, hip width apart, make a belt, 
keep it between your legs and just see when it comes to moving how bizarre that makes it and how much you sometimes go to close your legs when you're walking which means I'm off balance whereas if I'm naturally like this I'm on balance oh I think I just got a message from Gary hey Gary something about Gary oh he's probably asking if I'm on yeah I'm on Gary so belt between legs and just practice moving Around. I've got not got my knickers around my ankles now, it's a belt or a bra. Could use a bra just to keep my feet the same distance apart. Excellent. There is a little fun training tip that Angie used to make me do. So we're gonna start off with a reverse triangle or an open triangle. They used to be called back in the day male and female triangles. But that was a bit like learning French to me. As soon as you put a sex on something, my brain just goes, I don't get it. What that. is it? Yeah. You know, a rubber is male and a rule is female. Boom! The moment I stopped learning French, that was. So That's my brain just couldn't comprehend with it. So a reverse or an open triangle and a forward or a closed triangle, my brain understands a lot more. So nice and simple. We're going to start off with broken movements. And then when we're comfortable with the broken movements, we're then going to make it into a fluid movement by adding another stick. And I'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Oh, hi, Louis. Louis just joined in as well. Louis, 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 so, Louis. This is going to be a reverse. So that we start at the bottom point and the triangle is open. Can they see that on camera? Uh, yes, they can. Good. There. Gary says, what the fuck? Thanks, Gary. <laughs> it's your shorts. It's my shorts. <laughs> These are my tie boxing shorts so that you can see my legs because they've got nice, easy movements. But don't worry, underneath I have got the lycra shorts. You don't have to scarily put up with a little flash. Thanks. Oh, these aren't the ones. I've got ones that have got no fear eyes on the bum as well. I'll wear them for you next time, Gary, OK? Cool. OK, so reverse triangle. We're going to start at the point. And from here, we can step out and step back. And step out and step back. Nice and simple. And as you see, it's a broken. We're not going anywhere. Just moving that way and that way. Hands are up, ready to train. Moving from one side to another. Stupid dog's coming in again. He's a good beastie boy. Excellent. And this is broken because we haven't used the end. Put the end one on. And then we can work round it. Now we're being joined by the cap as well. First one way. And then the other. Oh, now the cat's decided it's scared. And then the other. That's fluid because we're moving all three. Take one away and it makes it a broken one. So this way it gives us something nice and simple and easy to practice. <laughs> Good. Do you want a quick go? We're going to do a forward triangle. Yeah, that's just confused a lot of you by putting the point on the inside. Now we're going to work on the inside, but it's still going to be a broken triangle. So from this point, we can step to there. Hands up, nice guard position. That's it. And we see it's broken. Mm -hmm. Going from one side to another. Put on the third one. And we can make it flow. A nice fluid triangle now. If you think it's hard watching this at home, you try doing it and watching it on two screens at the same time and not tripping over the sticks and making a YouTube moment. Yeah, I'm obviously a lot better at this than I thought I was. Brilliant. So now we can fluidly move around this area without having to think too much about it. Good. Come on. Now 
although these are the Filipino shapes that we're working from, we're all made of maths. There isn't any difference between my arms, the Japanese arms and the Filipino arms. This stick, you can see that on both cameras, you can see that on both cameras, is the same distance apart as horse stance. So that is worth remembering. So when it comes to working from the triangles, we can do a horse stance to exactly the same distance. And we can practice what we would consider to be a Japanese movement, the horse stance. The Filipinos do have the horse stance. Excellent. Another slight different variation on it. I like to do this one on a forward triangle. So on here, we can move to here, we can step back, we can kneel, but we're kneeing the point. Back up, move to here, kneel, back up, back up there, move to there, kneel, step out, step back, kneel. See how we're getting all this exercise and still working on the same shapes and the same movements. Excellent. So we started off by just moving in a broken way. We then went to being able to do it fluidly. Cool. We then went to being able to do a horse stance. <laughs> we then went to being able to kneel. Excellent. And that's all from a reverse or a forward triangle that can be broken or can be fluid by adding the extra one on. Lots of things to practice there and think about, but that's just the first two we're going to We're going to work on a star pattern now. So if you can imagine, that shape, on the floor. If you've got any masking tape you can do it, but we all pretty much know what a star shape is. So if we start off at the middle of the star, just checking I've got no friend behind me, hands up in guard, we can step forward and step back to the middle, we can step back and step back to the middle. We can then step out the first angle, back to the middle, the center, the middle, reverse angle, forward, center, reverse, and then back to the center again. So we can go forward, we can go back, we can go center, centre, we can go forward, or we can go back, we can go forward, or we can go back. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different patterns in a nice simple movement, and it's economy of movement. There goes a cat. So and then forwards, centre, and rear. The only thing you have to remember is changing your guard so that it's always in that ready position. That's it. Excellent. So, imagine that star on the floor. You want to try it? 
I'm not trying it here. Can you come try it here? Imagine the star on the floor in front of you. If I use this one, you can have this as your centre. So start off in your ready position, knee manji. There, so that foot is going to be your centre. That's what you're going to keep going back to. So you can step forward so that your back foot is on there. Come, up, come back. Shuffle forward so that foot wow. comes to there. There we go. And then shuffle back. Good, that's it. So there's your forward and there's your reverse. So go forward and go back. Good, and then come up to the centre and go across. Come to the centre and go across. Well, this way. Across. <laughs> that's it. And then back to the centre again. So we just go through the four directions okay. to start off with. So hands up. Good. Step forward. Step back. Step forward. And to the side. And to the side. Over here. There we go. So we're making a cross shape on the floor. Then we can do this. Whatever the bits are are called a star, sprouts, what point? points, the other bits. The so, sprouts of the so star. From the centre, you can go over there. Oh, what? back to the centre. <laughs> other foot. There we go. And then back to the centre. And then back to this point. And then back to the centre. Then we use this foot to go to this point. And back to the centre. And then this foot to go to this point. That's it. So, we can go over there. And back, and over there, and back, and forward, and back, and forward, and back. Cool. So, all of them together. Don't say forward when I'm going back, though. Okay. Hands up, ready to go? So, step to the centre, up there. Good. And then back, and then centre and across, and centre and across, and then forward, and back, centre and forward center and back good just try that once all by yourself you're doing spectacular that's it that pattern there that's it good yeah getting the idea nicely this is the first time joe's done this as well she hasn't fallen over yet so you get extra points for that perfect Ta -da! Woo -woo -woo. got the star as a whole we can just isolate half of it. So we can practice just half of it. So what I mean by that is, from the centre position, we can step forward <laughs> and we can step back. We can go to the side, we can go forward or back. That's it. From there, forward, back, centre, forward, reverse. So we're just doing the spokes. Spokes. That's what I was looking for. And it's not a star, it's a wheel. What would you call the bits on a star? There we go. Points. Is it a point? Anybody here watch Frozen enough to work out what the bits on a snowflake are called? So there we go. You can find that out and personal message don't me. Talk about that in Frozen. And we'll put a credit on the DVD, on the video thingy of what actually the bits are called. I reckon it's spokes. But there we go. That's just kind of spokes of a star. You have points of a star. Cool. I didn't do the other side, so we could do the other side whilst I'm there. Or we can go forward and back and sideways and forwards and back. There we go. See? Isolate one side or isolate another side. It's handy with the isolation because if I'm this side and I'm always used to doing this, I can then go, oh no, I'm comfortable working out from here. I've got a wall behind me up there, you see? Or if I'm on this side. Ah, I can't do this side of it, but I can do this bit of it. Nice and simple, just isolate one side or another. Okay. Reverse, forward, star, and then isolating half of the star. So next we've got a diamond to do. Four sticks, a diamond. Now I find, because I've got little legs, that them all on the floor is a little too big and I'm not doing natural movement. So if I overlap them, means I can do natural movement much better. Gary says, is this Hapo no Kazushi? <laughs> <laughs> I have to have a read at what you're saying, Gary. It possibly could be. Um, this is, the, the, I've learnt it through Petiki Tertia. This is PTK stuff. Um, but yeah, 
there's only so many arms, there's only so many legs. We do certain things, the Filipinos do certain things, the Chinese do certain things. These are just the words that I know for it. So, okay, so diamond pattern, exactly the same as before. Look, we've got those triangles there that we can use. Does that happen to do anything? Oh my God, look, we've got those triangles we can use. Excellent, and then we can flow between all of them in the diamond shape and you can use this to make up your own patterns your own training nice and simple do you want to try dance around the diamond oh i should have changed my outfit and been in a different fancy dress a different fancy dress that would have been amazing let's see what we can sort out by the time it comes to the hourglass in a minute okay so but that's a challenge. That's a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> so nice and free flow. You saw how I was doing. That's it. That's it. Yeah. You put the feet together. You can shuffle. You don't want the feet together for too long, but you can then shuffle it into the next position. Go all that's the way it. around. Yeah, like you can that. go all the way around. Oh, I kicked the stick. That's it, right? No one will know. It's, no, it's only on the internet. Yeah. Nice and simple. So it gives you this little area for you to practice. And you know that you're keeping your feet at a nice natural distance where it's comfortable to move. You're not overstretching yourself. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Sweet. Good. I'm going to get changed now. Great. You go get changed whilst I explain the hourglass. The hourglass takes up slightly more room. So I want to make sure that we've got enough room to get it in here. As you can see, I'm making this hourglass shape whilst I'm cleaning up my toys to make sure I've got enough room. So, the hourglass involves a double step. So, I tend to start in the bottom corner of the hourglass to make sure I've got enough room to do it. Bottom corner, as we're doing, guard up. We can step to the side. We can then step across and step across again. We can then step to the side. See how I change my guard? I'm stepping back and stepping back again. No, I'm not sure. I'll check it out in the video, but I pretty much should be in the same place as what I started. Guard up, step, double step, and across. Change guard, double step, and back. Excellent. Guard up there. I'm going to do it from this side just to see if I can do it from this side. Guard up, step. Pretty close, I'm falling into the curtain. So, see how I'm changing and moving my guard so that it's where it needs to be so that we can jab and cross at any point. Step forward, whoop, found the curtain then. So, all of these things that we've done so far have just been the movement of our legs. We can put in the horse stance to any of them, as I was just showing, we can put in the kneel to any of them as I was just showing. We can duck. Wow, how much fancy dress have you got? I just, I just <laughs> we can duck. We can knee, we can kick, and of course we can punch with all of these things and add more and more bits, more and more layers to this economy of movement. Okay, so as an idea, Start at the bottom corner, hands together, we can move across and kick. One, two, and knee. Move across, jab cross. Step back, step back, kick, cross, kneel. Step forward, kick, slide, jab cross, step back, jab cross, step back. Excellent. See, we can put in whatever we want into these movement patterns. And this hourglass is the most complicated movement pattern that we're going to come across to know it. Just working on these points. Okay, you want to come and try going through the hourglass? Yes, hang on two seconds. Okay. Perfect. That's Bob now coming to join us. We've got the entire family. Charlie, Binks, Woof and Bob. Well, don't associate Charlie with one of the pets. The entire family, I said. Yeah, yeah, my family and other animals. Read it if oh, you haven't already. Right. 
a good reason. Right, okay, so. You're not going to stay in place at all. Oh yeah, because you wouldn't want to look stupid, would you? <laughs> Excellent. So, the hourglass. We'll okay. start that in the corner. And then we can step across both feet. And then we can step to the centre. And step again. Oop, this way. Keep going in the direction you were going across. That's it. Can't and then see. across. <laughs> and then back to the centre. And then back once more. That's it. And you're in the same position you started from. Okay. Yeah, so step across, centre, centre, across, back, back, there we go. So we're in, making that hourglass shape. That's it, remember to swap your guard when you swap from one side to another. Kawabunga. Like that? Yep, that's it, swapping the guard from one side. That's it. Okay, what friend do I swap to guard? That's it, that's perfect. So uh, this way, you're ready for attacks this way, so you want to be that way on. Okay. But then if you swap to the other side, you then need to be that way so that it's in front. Okay. Cool. So then when you come across, oh look, that's right. And then you step forward. Now you want to swap it back. Okay. So then when you step over, you want to swap it again. That's it. <laughs> and then step back. Too much to step back. Yeah. yeah. It takes practice to become natural. Just do a couple more, see how much more easier it is. Start like this. Yep. And Don't worry. I swap across and I switch it. Yep. Switch hands. And you come forwards. That's it. Good, and again, that's it, and across, and back, and back, that's it, good, and you know you're in about the right place if you end up and you don't fall into the curtains every time you do it, cool, so, well done, Don already guess, did you want to turn around so you can drink and see, look, and your tail show. So, whether we are working on the reverse triangle, whether we're flowing with it, or whether it's a broken triangle, or we're working from the forward triangle and it's broken, or we're flowing from it. I have to make it natural movement, so I have to swap my guard naturally so that it's easy to move. If we're working from the star, Or if we isolate it to just half the star. Or we go to the diamond. Or we do the hourglass. Excellent. They're all reasonably simple, they're all simple shapes, and all of these are working on a forward and backwards motion. We're swapping our guard and making natural ease. Now, if we take this nice simple triangle, just an idea for the last bit tonight, for something for you to go away and think about. This natural reverse triangle that we've been dealing with, and it's this way, we can work with it. We're not gaining too much on our opponent. So if I put that triangle there and I start at this position, I've instantly gained a huge amount of my opponent by just taking those two steps. See the difference that makes? So if we want to get really technical, Put another one on just for the fun of it. So from our initial start position, we can go to there, we can go to there, we can go to there. So one, two, three, one, two, three, slightly natural steps. I'm getting used to instantly getting straight into my opponent from a back position. Cool. That gives you guys something to think about. Would you like to try a double or a triple? Just the double for Joe. Cool, so. Uh, from the start position. Hands up, guards up. Step to the point and step forward. There we go. And then step back. Good. And do it again. 
Nice, so you're ready to attack with these. Open them up a little bit, make them a little, that's better. Good, and one more. Good, so if I happen to be Mr. Nasty Man standing at this distance now with a knife, with two steps, you can cover enough distance. Natural range of movement. Rather than thinking, that is a long way I've got to cover in order to get there. So if you just do a normal step, yeah, bang. But I can see you're then coming. Now do the zigzag. Oh, look at that, hey? Skills I've got. Zigzag again? I go to attack for that. Excellent. So, so you're so not again. <laughs> that worked an absolute treat. Uh, I'll sue for that later. Dan Whatever. told me to that. Yeah, there's Dan, it's your fault. You told it to slap hard. So. so, those are some ideas to get you thinking this through. And to give you something to play with whilst you're all off board at home. I will send you a copy of this that <laughs> I made yeah. so that this is the foot movements to make life a bit easier for you. But as we were saying at the beginning, footwork has to be natural motion. And by learning economy of movement and committing this to memory, you're allowing your unconscious competence to take over when it's needed the most. And then this allows you to be elegant and eloquent and it's already going to be at your feet, so you haven't got to think about it. OK, thank you ever so much for this broad shoulders. Mate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you ever so much for the six of you watching. I will sort this out so that the top version can come out in a couple of days so that you can all watch it and re go over it. And this bottom version is all live, which is really scary. So thank you very much, guys. Have a great night. Well done to Joe and Binks and Bob and Wolf and Charlie. Everybody was in it. And remember, you will be tested on this. Oh, yes, you will. Oh, last but not least, send me more copies of you guys doing the Dirty Dozen plus one. Ooh. Tony sent it. It's been brilliant. So Gary, Louis, Cliff, no excuses. It's all on the Facebook and the YouTube channels. Copy it. Send me a video of it because I'm going to make a little clip of all of us doing it and send it to two Honjolinas just to say thank you for giving us some tips. Brilliant. Well done, guys. Have a great night. See you later. Bye. I think that's it. Cool. Jobs together.